You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. A different video coming along, it's going to be the start of, I guess, a new series in which we're going to replicate tactics in FIFA uh, that are sort of produced by managers and teams um, all around in the in the real footballing world, really. Uh, I sort of hinted at this last year uh, for the Pep Guardiola 4-3-3. And the, the the problem was that it was already too far gone and stuff. But people did actually ask to see it, so I thought let's let's start a series on it. Um, you know, I saw a couple of videos of people doing this last year, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, they were just getting it wrong. I mean, I don't mean to be mean or rude, but they were just getting it all wrong. So um, what we're gonna do today? Not only am I gonna show you how to replicate this tactic, but also how to adjust it a little bit so that it will actually work in FIFA in game. Uh, so there's going to be a couple of things that you see that we um, that we do. You might think, whoa, what's he doing there? But trust me, I'll explain myself as we go along. So you've got your 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, obviously, that is the style Man City playing out. The centre-backs, absolutely fine. The full-backs is where we're going to start. And this is very important because the full-backs are so important to the Guardiola system. Um, their role is just so underrated. So what you want to do is you actually want to move them up to wing backs and the reason is is that if they're just in a normal fullback position on FIFA they don't get forward enough and they're not attacking minded enough when Fernandinho receives the ball here in this position the the right and left back should be past him they should have overlapped him and they should be ready all ready to to receive the pass you know if it's just a, a regular left back and right back uh, they won't you know be high enough to receive the ball in a good position so you want to boost them up to wing back um, now you've got your holding midfield that's fine make sure he's a CDM now with the two center midfielders what you want to do is one of them uh, you actually want to boost into the attacking midfield role and it's more your David Silva type guy so you move him up a little bit and move him into LAM and the reason is is that when you've got a flat midfield free um, or the two flat midfielders ahead of the one holding midfielder um, they don't get into those advanced areas enough on the game um, so you notice a bit of a gap even if you're playing a false nine you notice a bit of a gap um, and it's harder to create chances the reason why you just move silver and not the Bruyne or, or someone like the Bruyne is that the Bruyne is very much very energetic he's got so much energy as you can see here 89 stamina on game if you set him as a boxer box man you know you should be okay um, but with David Silva you want to boost him up a bit and get him into those advanced areas. Um, and then, of course, you've got your front three, right winger, striker, left winger. Um, and we'll come on to their roles. In fact, we'll come on to their instructions now. So, you've got all these. Sweeper keeper, of course, that is newly added uh, to FIFA 20 this year, I do believe, which is a, a great feature. And these two, of course, will remain um, sort of solid in their defensive positions in their centre back roles. Now with the fullbacks, you've got two options here. Let's say you're on, for example, we're on the balanced game plan here. So this is the regular city um, tactic. So you want them to join the attack, but you also want them to overlap. And that's so important. You see them do it so many times, like of Walker, Zinchenko, usually Mendy when he's not injured. Um, you'll have them join the attack and overlap. However, with the fullbacks, Let's say you're playing someone like, I don't know, Liverpool. Liverpool is a really good example. So when, the, when Man City play Liverpool or, or a team along those lines, uh, let's say they're in the lead, but they're worried about um, the counter-attack. They're worried about the threat that the opposition pose on the counter. Therefore, if their full-backs get forward, and uh, let's say they've only got three players left, Fernandinho and the two centre-backs, what you'll do is, let's say we'll switch to a defensive game plan for this one. What you'll do is you'll want to move these two back into the right back and left back position. So if we uh, if we get on that here. Um, so you want to move them back into the right back and left back position. And then on instructions, what you'll want to do is you'll want to give them a balanced attack. So there's still um, the occasional time to, uh, to get forward in certain situations. But then you want to put run type on inverted. And the reason why is, is that this is the best way uh, to replicate how the fullbacks 
in that situation in real life will actually, rather than overlapping and going forward in most situations, they will actually bed in and sort of become an extra centre midfielder. You'll see them sort of hang back on the pitch and they come inside into the middle. And this is the best way uh, to really replicate that. So the best way to do it on game is to um, you know do it on a on a defensive game plan. So then you can change. Let's say if you're ahead, you're worried about conceding the lead, or you're you're playing a team like Liverpool, whatsoever. Uh, I'm just going to move these back into their original positions. So that's the best way to replicate it on FIFA 20. Um, so make sure you um, you know you certainly give that a look. Then with the holding midfielder, of course, Fernandinho, you've got stay back while attacking and balanced defensive behaviour. Also, you actually want him to cover the centre. You don't want to leave him, you know, leaving his position too often. You want him to stay within that position. Guardiola's tactic is very, very structured. Um, and a lot of players not allowed to leave um, their side of the field. Very rarely will you see them varying over. So keep him in the centre. And then we'll come to the midfielders. So let's say you've got De Bruyne as this um, one of the, the two central midfielders, the one who's uh, you know a little bit deeper or, or base position is a little bit deeper. So you want him to get forward and you want him to get into the box for the cross. Now De Bruyne is one player who is allowed more. Um, sort of attacking freedom so you can stick free roam on him the only problem is with that is let's say if you're if you're feeling a little bit vulnerable on the counter attack switch that back to stick to position because then um, you'll see that he's more likely to be um, you know in not only in his position but getting back more uh, whereas free roam could be a, I mean he could be playing offside for all we know so um, you can stick that with free roam but like I say if you're thinking about um, worried about the counter attack Back to stick to position. Um, and that's it. By the way, just to mention, interceptions, always keep them on normal, really, unless you're really pushing for a, a, a late goal. Uh, because if you put them on aggressive interceptions, which would be um, more, you know, closer to, to what Man City are like, um, the problem is that it will drain stamina really heavily on this game. So um, keep them on normal. Unless, oh, like I say, you're pushing for a goal. And now, David Silva, what you want is you actually want him to stay on the edge of the box for the cross. Very rarely do you see him actually bursting into the box in a, in a crossing situation. Um, you can put comeback on defence, but the problem is, like I say, on this game, we try and adapt it slightly to FIFA 20. Um, he will come back on defence, not that he has to actually come back often, because, of course, City are, have possession so much for so much of the game. Um, but the problem is he's got so little stamina, only in the, the 70s, I believe. In fact, let's have a let's have a quick look here. Yeah, 73. So, um, you know, if he's constantly running back and you're not uh, maintaining possession, that is going to drain on him. So go with basic defensive support. Really, the idea is that you shouldn't he shouldn't be having to run back too much because you should be in control of possession um, and keeping the tempo, you know, down to, to what you, you set it to. So, um, like I say... You can go with basic and make sure you're just playing to the system. And then we've got the front three, which of course are the most flamboyant part. Now, EA have actually got Sterling to stay wide, and, and this actually isn't the case. Um, Sterling, yes, he will get in behind, but he actually cuts inside. What happens is, is he angles his runs. So, you know, you've got that extra goal threat running in behind. Stay wide is going to really severely limit you because he's only going to get into crossing positions, really. You want him on cut inside. And you also want him on getting to the box for the cross. It's mad that EA, for some reason, haven't got this set as the nap as the you know default one. You always see Sterling, both wingers, but Sterling in particular, getting into the box for crosses from the other side. And he's always there to poach for tap-ins all the time. That is just a major part of his game now with that movement. Um, and, you know, so you want him getting into the box for crosses. You can have comeback on defence. Um, it's better for the wingers. Of course, they've got more stamina. Like I say, though, if you're in control of possession for the whole game, like this tactic, you know, want needs you to be, um, you know, it shouldn't matter too much. So that's what you want for Sterling. Now, with the right winger, it's a little bit different. Now, if you've got, let's have a look here. You've also got Mares. So let's say if you've got Mares in, you're going to do pretty much what is um, the same for Sterling. You're going to have um, cut inside. Of course, he loves to get onto his left foot. You're going to want getting behind, come back on defence and get into the box. Now, if you've got Bernardo Silva 
slightly different story, of course. Bernardo Silva is not quite your, your traditional right winger. You know, in fact, you do see him play in the centre quite a lot. Now, so you'll have come back on defence and you'll have cut inside, but actually you'll have come short. And the reason is, is that Bernardo Silva doesn't actually have that blistering pace um, that's going to make defences frightened and also to penetrate them by running in behind. Um, so you have him on come short. He loves to pick the ball up and then he can work some, uh, you know, work his stuff by, uh, you know, driving with the ball from deep. So you want him on come short. You can also have him getting into the box for the cross as well. And then finally, we have the big man Sergio Aguero up front. Now, Aguero, the way Aguero plays in real life is very much mixed attack. Sometimes you'll see him as a false nine. Sometimes you'll see him getting in behind, etc. Sometimes he just likes to have the ball to his feet in his position. And then, you know, people will run off in etc. In this situation, go false nine. Uh, because you'll find that even as a false nine and anyone who started watching my AC Milan career mode um, will see that even if you've got a player who's playing as a false nine, he will still get into those uh, positions, let's say for crossing opportunities, etc. in the box. So it's not as if he'll be dropping off so much, you, you won't find him. Um, so keep him as a false nine. And then also you want to stay central. Like I say, in Guardiola's formation um, and tactic, a lot of players, very structured, have to remain in their position. Aguero is one. You will not find him varying out from side to side. And also, you want him to stay forward as well to not exert so much stamina. Right, so that's the player instructions. Now, quickly, we want to move on to the tactics. So, defence. Press after possession loss, yes. Um, some people think it's constant pressure. Not the case, actually. They don't burn themselves out. Um, it's press after possession loss is more um, like you know, the sort of Man City style. Generally, and as you'll see here in the depth, which is pretty spar, maybe move that up one, they actually like to keep a mid-block um, for their players. It's compact, but it's a mid-block rather than um, such an extreme sort of geg and press style, uh, in which case they'd be up the pitch here. Uh, you, so it's closer to this actually and in terms of the whip for the sake of FIFA you actually want to lower it a little bit you want players running in behind you and in between your your line and your players less so you want to actually make that more narrow become more compact and then moving on to the offense um, of course we've got possession style now with the whip actually what you want to do is you want to narrow this as well because the fullbacks should be providing the width in your system and because they're set as wingbacks in this tactic you'll be okay because they will still get wide whereas your centre midfielders um, and wingers etc such as Bernardo Silva will still be coming short so you want to actually make it a narrow uh, system and that makes it sound like it, it's not going to have the effect trust me um, it will work you know, you'll just get players coming a lot shorter for the ball and it will be a lot more uh, sort of replicating that, that style. So make sure it's a, a more narrow width. Players in the box is actually fine in this situation. Um, you know, you could be tempted to sort of throw men forward. It's not the case um, with City. You'll have a couple of players, like I say. You'll have an Aguero, you'll have a Sterling. You might have a De Bruyne in the box as well. Um, and then, you know, Germany players circling around the outside waiting for that opportunity. So um, keep it at, at around five. That should do. You should have two or three players, maybe a fourth in certain situations, but rarely in the box. And then for corners, um, actually throw one more forward. The reason being is that you'll still have two men back, um, which is more than enough. And also uh, you're going to have more men throwing forward, in which case a City, quite important because for set pieces, you know, they're, they um, don't have the tallest of teams, so you want more targets in the box. So, um, yeah, yeah, that, that's really it, guys, to be honest. Um, let me know what you think. I mean, this is, um, well, it was really fun to do, that's for sure. Let me know what you think, if you if you enjoyed it or not, if you'd like to see more of these videos, uh, tactics replicate you know, replicating tactics. I've got thinking loads of managers, Jurgen Klopp, Mauricio Pochettino, etc. We can go abroad to the likes of uh, uh, Barcelona and stuff, Ajax, Den Haag's Ajax, um, all sorts. You know, let me know, guys, if you've enjoyed this and you want to see more. I really do uh, appreciate it and I'd, I'd love to do more of these videos if you enjoy it. Um, on that note, we're going to finish it off there. Don't forget to go and check out my AC Milan FIFA 20 career mode series that's currently going on the channel and also my um, Man United PES 2020 Master League series as well. Um, and on that note, if you enjoyed the video, 
please do leave a like, let me know that you've enjoyed the content, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. That's always important. I massively appreciate that. I'm going to finish here. So, I'm Bron18, and I'll see you for the next one. Come on.